Let's talk about why I come to this. And Keith, I, you talk so emphatically about these things. And it's because I've done research. 72 organizations, three years, 144,000 employees represented 145 years of change effort. I did a measurement scorecard with 30 change factors and tested numerically what was happening and what wasn't. And I followed them for three years. And I wrote that in a, my uh, work product came out in my book, The Improvement Toolbox. Here's the, at the end of it, let me just summarize the whole thing. Most of what we do for change either doesn't help or it impedes. How do you like that? And how would you like me, so I spent my life in change management to, to see this out in the, in, the, in the world and the predominant narrative is that, oh, all we need is me messaging and resistance attacking. And I go, that's just not the way it is. Why do you think that we're doing it incorrectly? When you want to address something in, in your group or your, your personal life, how do you approach a change? Go ahead, tell me how you approach a personal change. What do you do? Leaders are unique that way. They just say, I want to accomplish this. They have some idea what they do, and they just start. The trouble is that leaders often think everyone's like them. I did a consulting gig with a very high-end elite manu uh, consulting group. They were sending people all over North and South America to do financial software. I was sitting at a resort with them uh, on a retreat, and, but they weren't filling in their hours. They were going to North and South America. They weren't filling in their project hours as, as good as, as well as they could. And what happened was they couldn't report to the clients how many hours they'd used each month. They looked, they looked silly. But they were amazing consultants. They couldn't fire them because they were really rare, rare, rare people. And I said, I said, Dave, the neat thing about this, we can, we can fix this today. Just tie it to payroll. And he slammed his fist on the table and said, no. We've got the right people, they'll do the right thing. I go, no, they won't. <laughs> I said, they've worked their backsides off from Sunday till Friday. They're getting in a, fl a flight. Do I, do I log into your cumbersome system and log hours, or do I close my laptop and head to the airport for a cocktail before I get on a flight? I know what they're doing now. So, he, I'm not kidding. He said, we will not do that. And that's the last time I worked for that organization because I called him out in front of his staff. Six months later, I called him. I said, Dave, what you do? He said, we tied it to payroll. <laughs> but leaders, we like to declare. And this is the, the typical change management. And our message is speaking, because we are inspirational, and we're amazing, and, and we just love doing that. And, and people will respond when I say things. And it's just wrong. It's just wrong. It doesn't motivate them, it doesn't minimize resistance. Because the assumptions underneath this are twofold. One, the behavior of your people is personal choices. We think they're like us. They're not. They're not. That's when I wrote my first book. And they think, in terms of knowledge, they know what to do differently. We'll put up a target on the wall. They'll all know what to do differently. And really what happens is it starts, and then it goes back to what it was like. Anybody seen that kind of thing before? Anyone? Put your hands up if you've seen that before. We all have. We all have. It's called the, you know, the ricochet effect. We, we start and then we go back to normal. And reason, the, the reason we, we do that is there's, there's three things. One, the, the mechanism that we're using is messaging. Messaging. And we're using words. Words, inspirational words. Posters that say leadership or perseverance. Leaders, we need inspiration to keep our energy up, yes? Leadership is hard work. It's taxing emotionally. I get that, but when you think your people are like that, you're missing something, because your people are not like that. Your people have in their head a DNA. That's not their, their chromosomes, that's the daily need to accomplish. That's that little box I was talking about before that said, if they have, they have in their head a list of what they're accountable for, if what you're talking about isn't on that list, they smile and they go back to doing exactly what they did before, because they're accountable for what? That. And they smile. So we, can, we, we just love words, and, and, and this is what my research found. And then I, I wrote up my master's thesis. I, I, I thought that was amazing. And I, I said, wow, that's accountability, not words. And I thought, wow, how clever, Keith. And then I read a 3,000-year-old Jewish uh, quote from Solomon. It said, servants cannot be corrected with just words. So they understand, yeah, they won't respond. I went, that's my 200-page thesis in 10 words, really get elegantly put. <laughs> Pretty annoying. Okay? So, servants cannot be correct with just words. Though they understand, they won't respond. 
And behavior, frankly, isn't a, isn't a function of personal choices. It's not. It's a function of your work environment. If, if you learn that today and nothing else, your delegation, everything you'll do be, will be 10 times more powerful. Because you'll get the behavior you structure. You might want to write that one down. You get the behavior you structure. And so what you'll learn is behavior, you'll get the behavior you structure. So your, the behavior is always a response to the work environment. Change the work environment, you'll get the response. And the best way to illustrate that, think of your organization as a trampoline. And everybody's behavior is held by this trampoline of, of reinforcing mechanisms. And if you put your hand on a trampoline fabric and push down, and then take it away, how long did it stay down? Doesn't stay down at all, does it? Comes right back. Which is exactly what we're saying. We start and then we go right back. I did that, I changed, you know, I, I did a work culture transformation in, in a $2.3 billion healthcare network. Uh, it was so successful that after a few days, the, some staff people noticed. But what they said was they were concerned. They saw a real positive change in their boss, but then said to the, the lady who scheduled our meetings, Is this a speech? Because speeches last three weeks around here. I went, Ah, oh, they're pretty clever ladies. That's exactly the case. Pretty aware. So every employee's activities are held in tension. And you can talk forever, and the moment you stop talking, it goes back to what it was. So really, what, and what we do is we, and we limit their flexibility. We add project. We can't affect their behavior. So we add new project and new project. And it's a project sandwich. And we're doing Jenga with, uh, with projects on top of their jobs, right? right? And we go, what's the matter with you? You've got no priorities. You can't get stuff done. And, but, but rather than tell them how to do their job inside their job, with a few minutes here different, that's what they're looking for. And, and, and really the knowledge is that the assumption here is that leaders think, well, there are, my people know what to do different, I'll just put up a target. No, they don't. And they don't know. Because my research found that after three years, people, the reinforcing uh, uh, mechanisms in companies kind of push away those neat ideas that people came with when they first came, and then they go back to what it is. And they go, no, we can't do that here. No, that wouldn't work here. And after three years, they forget about how to do it different. And then, so what you get, when the target goes up on the wall, you get exactly the same behavior as you got before. And what did Einstein say about behavior? So it's insanity, right? Ex expecting something different from the same activities. But my point is that this discourages people. I have been in senior billion dollar organizations where I've heard executives say, I want you to work smarter, not harder. What do you think the response is to that? I don't know anybody who comes to work saying, I want to be dumb today. I don't know one person. I've never met them. I've worked in 50 organizations over 25 years. It discourages them. So the answer here is, and often what, anybody finance in the room? So the finance people, I'm missing, what am I missing? Measurement, yes, maybe? Yeah, there you go. All right, you got me, no you don't. I love this from Einstein. Not everything that, can, that counts can be counted. And not everything that can be counted counts. That's kind of a tongue twister. I had a company that wanted to go back to Matt's thought about opening up sales and opportunities. We had a company, they're very successful, 67% of the market in their, in their space, very successful. They said, well, I sat around with them in strategic planning and said, we want to open up this new market. We'd like it to be X percent sales in the next two years. That's the measurement. We, we're done. And I said, I said to them, are we done? And they go, yeah. No, no, I know. Are, are, are we done? Yeah. No, and that's not going to happen. Because I knew the people involved, the, the two most senior uh, salespeople they had, they were mentoring other salespeople. They, anybody seen a non-busy in that role? They're just busier than one-armed paper hanger, right? They're just crazy busy. And I said, this is important, not urgent. The urgent's going to kick the tar of that every single day. So here's, here's, here's the next thought, and this is the pivot that we're going to work on. This is how to think about your organization. What I said to them was this. What does opening up a market look like? What's the pattern of activity? Is it one trade show every quarter? Is it a, an industry breakfast with that group once a month? What is the act? Let's hold the activity pattern accountable. Then we'll get the outcome. Because if you don't hold the activity pattern accountable, you will never get the outcome. I'll talk about that in a minute. But that's the focus of what I'm talking about here in this instructive type of change. 
And the mechanism here isn't talking. It's suggested actions. And they're time relevant and accountable. This is critical. This is key, key, but it's so hard. But once you get it, you'll never look at it the same way again. So it's, we're talking not with, with words, and what we're saying, here's a suggested action. It's time relevant and it's accountable or visible. And the assumptions here are, are, are rational, that the, the, work in, is the, uh, the work behavior is a product of the work environment, and that they do not know what to do. Every single time I've done this over the last 20 years, it starts nicely and it goes up a little bit and it sort of plateaus, because that's how organizations work. They go up to the new normal. But that's a step I can build on every single time. And it looks great. Why is it effective? Well, it's, now the mechanism isn't words, it's accountability. And we're talking about what staff have in their heads. It's their DNA. How many people have young people, millennials, in their, their, their teams? Do you know what they're looking for? Is not just targets. They want you to suggest some activities that they can rock their jobs with because they expect that kind of coaching. And if they, my research says that if they don't get it, they will leave. To, for a job that, where the boss is actually interested. So this coaching, the suggested action, is actually received unbelievably positive by millennials and everyone else, actually. Because they go, hey, you're interested in my job. You want me to rock my job. Thanks very much. I have never had anyone be anything but encouraged by a boss coming down and says, I've got some ideas on how you can rock your contribution. That's a, not a bad discussion. It's easy to have. And over here, it actually creates flexibility because we talk about tweaking the job that they have. And what I rec I'll, I'll get into that in a second, but what I want you to do here is when you make this suggestion about what behavior we can do, I want you to make it time relevant because then, then it creates flexibility. We're not adding another job on top of another job. We're saying, in your job, do this differently. Do this here. When you're doing that, do this. Do this, do this. Just adjust what they're doing right now. And what happens is it actually communicates. And here's what I mean by that. I had, I had a conversation with a CIO of a $2.3 billion organization as healthcare. And he said to me in my first 10 minute conversation with him, can you help me with my direct reports? They do not get strategy. Can you help me? I said, okay, Mike, tell me more. So he told me how he gives passionate speeches of what has to happen about the 35 different agendas, I'm not lying, 35 different agendas that need to be implemented over the next three to five years. I give them a three hour presentation and I smile and I go, okay. I said, Mike, I've never, this is 10 minutes in to my conversation on the phone with him. I've never been there. Let me tell you exactly what happens at the end of your meeting. But Keith, you haven't been here. I know, but here's what happens. He said, go ahead. I said, one by one, they come up to you at the end of the meeting and go, Mike, that's great. But what do you want me to do? And he goes, that's exactly what they do. How did you know? <laughs> and I said, you need to understand what a working time horizon is. And this is a critical point of this morning. A working time horizon. You see, I said, you're a senior executive. You're thinking three to five years plus out about where the whole organization would be. And as you go down farther in your org chart, that working time horizon shrinks. I just spent six months helping uh, two healthcare networks adjust their behavior and, and transition. And the emergency room docs are focused in on 30 minutes increments, an hour. That's a big, long time frame for them. This is not a matter of intellect or intelligence. These people are brilliant but their focus from their job is short. If you talk outside that, they won't hear. And often what we do with these people, we give our three to five year presentation. And we smile and we go, hey, that's really communicating. I, they just totally get it, right? And, but their, our people are thinking in here. And anybody seen Charlie Brown's Christmas special? <laughs> when you do the targets, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like you're talking on a different channel because they're thinking in the time frame that's relevant to them. What I said to the executive, I said, you need to learn how to translate what you want to see into the time frame that they're working in, and then you'll truly communicate. And he said, can you help me do that? I see, and then he said, how quickly can you get here? And I worked with them for two years. So our people are here, they're looking in this, this yellow, it's, I call them step forward suggestions. And you, what you're looking for is for pivotal operational actions. You're looking for 
a few little things that can tweak, and you don't have to have many to make a big difference. You just have to tweak a few things. And it's natural. And why does step forward work? Well, it's how nature is. Here's a branch from my backyard. Every year it grows this much. It's bright red in the spring. And over the summer it goes gray. And the next spring it grows another 18 inches or so. And it's bright red and it goes gray. Grow, consolidate, grow, consolidate. Only bamboo grows an inch a day. Uh, but everything else, oak trees and everything solid, we grow and then we consolidate, grow and consolidate. This is a good thing to do. Think that way. So it's natural. The other thing is, when you do activities, I see people try to reach too far too quick. And it ends up dying. So organizations here, pretend it's like a planet and it has an atmosphere of support from the executives. Your activities need to be within what, you, what your executives are your normal work culture. Just a, an extrapolation from out a little bit. Not so far it'll fail. Keith, what are you talking about? Let me give you an example. We had a bank branch open up near us, and for the first time in my life in any uh, of this, uh, this bank's branches, I saw a greeter at the front door, like Disney and like Walmart. And I smiled and said to my wife, the moment we walked in, this will last about four weeks. So after about two weeks, they gave her a computer to work on when she wasn't greeting people. And after about four weeks, she was sitting now behind a desk, and when she was, she'd occasionally look up and say hi. And after six weeks, she wasn't there at all. All right? I refer to too far, reaching too far as a, as a way to stub your toe in front of your whole, your whole team, rather than do a step forward, consolidate it, and make another step forward, and look like amazing leaders. Because it's so easy to do if you just don't try to reach too far the first time. The company that gets this the best is Toyota. I have a friend of mine who was a client. He took the top manufacturing job at Toyota in Canada. And after six months, he said, Keith, come be my number two. And I said, I can't give you seven days a week because I, I have young kids. So I, I declined. But he told me we were working on a leadership. After he retired, we were working on, working on a leadership seminar together. He said, Keith, remember, it's not the targets, it's the daily improvements. Instead of saying it's the sales target, open up the market, it's what's that look like? What's opening up the market look like? Because our people do not naturally know what to do, and are the reinforcing and the urgency will pound it out, and they'll just look, they'll fail, and they don't need to. We just have to help them. We need to instruct them a little bit. He said, remember, it's not the targets, it's the daily improvements. There's no more powerful illustration than that. 